Hey guys, welcome back. So let me put the glasses down here. Um, it's been a while and uh, Ming just sent over a printer for a review and I spent the last six weeks looking at it. Here it is beside me. This is the Mingda Magician Max 2. Uh, it's basically a giant version of their Magician um, uh, X2. And this guy is 320 by 320 by 400. And it's got, you know, the flexible build plate. I mean, same thing as, as a little guy does, but here's what's the most impressive part. Let me bring it back over here. As of now, on their website, at the time of filming, this giant printer is $209. Are you ready to hear more about it? Let's do this. First of all, welcome to my channel. My name is Paul and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love it if you hit that button down below. Give me a like and all that good stuff. So welcome aboard. Um, just to get it out of the way, like any review I do with 3D printers, filament, and other stuff, they send it to me under the conditions that I'm going to say whatever I like about this. Um, they have no editorial control. They don't see the review any sooner than you guys are. And they were fine with that. So let's talk about this. Uh, <laughs> it's all I have to say. Mingda Magician Max 2. So I mentioned in the opener, it's 320 by 320 by 400. And I have all kinds of notes I want to share with you guys. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the basics. Unboxing it. Now, the last time I received a Mingda printer, it was, uh, the printer was inside styrofoam. And as you know, you just don't see styrofoam much these days. So it was a real mess getting all that cleaned up after. This machine, and I'll show you here in the footage, uh, when it showed up, everything was in plastic bags. So every piece had its own bag. Yes, it still had styrofoam, but uh, no issues with the cleanup whatsoever. So that went very well. Now, with a very detailed instruction book, everything went together very easily. Uh, pieces went together, following instructions step by step. And the other thing that I really liked about this book is that uh, they basically, <laughs> their manual covers every step. It tells you what everything on that controller does. And I can tell you from experience with other manufacturers that sell printers that are thousands of dollars, um, they don't include nearly as good and well-documented um, instructions. So kudos to Mingda. You did a good job there. Um, then the heartbreak. So we got to the SD card and that's where some of the small problems began to happen. Uh, the SD card, the manual and the documentation refers to, for the first print, go ahead and do, I think they have the rabbit test print, I believe it was. I think that's what they mentioned. So I looked in the SD card and the only thing in the SD card is a print for a great pumpkin or something, smash pumpkin or something like that. So not knowing what it is, I try it and it immediately starts printing a print with a raft and some other stuff. And you know, really, I mean, a printer that has auto bed leveling, we're gonna print something that has a raft. You just, those two generally don't go together. So that was a little disappointing. So I went to the website to go find that file, which is referred to in the manual. And the website has a link to the very same great smash pumpkin print as well too. So that was a little bit maddening. So what we had on the SD card was not usable. Um, I mean, I let it print and it printed okay, but it really wasn't the shining example I was looking for. So I went ahead and um, I did download from their website. Mingda has their own version of Cure. So what they've done is they got their own fork, their own version of it. And what they've done is they have all the Mingda printers inside their version of Cure. No problem, I get that installed. I go in, I do a quick, slice of a, something simple. I, you know, select obviously the, the Magician Max 2 printer and we're off and running. That sounds great. So I do my first test print and I call it a night. The next day I go to do some more testing on here and Mingda Cura will not load. I get a little black box and it goes away. So I install this on another printer. I'm sorry, I install this on another computer and initially it runs. I slice something else. I go back later and Again, what keeps happening is that this version of Cura, for whatever reason, and it's not just, I tried it on Windows 10, Windows 11, four different computers. I only have one computer that will run 5.3, or I think they call it 1.4.11 or something, 
reliably. So, so there's our strike two. <laughs> SD card didn't have the files we wanted and their Cura slicer um, is not working reliably on my computer. And the rub is that if I want to install the latest version of Cura, which I already have for the 22 other printers here, uh, there is no option for the Mingda Magician Max 2 on that. Actually, a lot of the Mingda printers are not showing up in the current release of Cura, which I'll leads to another comment later. So anyway, I had to, what I wound up doing is by looking at the laptop that had a functional copy of their program, uh, I was able to go into the current release of Kiora and basically create a custom printer based on the machine properties. And that's how I was able to get basically slicing to work on this machine. So awkward, not the worst thing in the world, but if you were a newbie, if this was your first printer and you're missing files off the SD card and the slicer is not working properly, that's awkward. So anyway, once Cura is set up, up and running, and I've, I've got that up and going, then it's on to the prints. Now for test prints, I started off with simple calibrations. I just, <laughs> let me lean forward here. Uh, I mean, I started off with, I'm using a Ziltec uh, ceramic white PLA. I like Ziltec stuff. Uh, there's a coupon code in the description down below. So what I did with my white material is I just went through to find out what the best temperature was based on how this guy was printing it. And I believe if memory serves correct, I think 205 for the first layer, 200 for everything was fine. I went through and there's more stuff you can see here. I did a retraction test. And then let me move you up a little bit closer over here. I did some really nice prints. I've got, uh, I did this excellent Wonder Woman print. And uh, again, white sh usually shows all the defects, but in this case, it did a really great job. Uh, these dragons are really popular. I've been finding these all over uh, on the uh, Prusa Printables website. And uh, it's funny, I downloaded this. And when I went to go find more information about the person that made them, uh, it kind of vanished. So I don't have a link for this I can share. Uh, of course, I did my, Benchy, people are crazy about Benchies. I don't think they really show anything great. But for me, because I am a cat person and I have a soft spot for them, uh, I love doing this cat print because this cat print has all these little fur tufts which serve as great little test of overhangs. And uh, the cat came out great. And I've had a lot of friends request these because they look so awesome. So printing, I didn't have too many issues whatsoever once I had the filament dialed in. I have had some issues with stringing. I've had to do a few retraction tests just to make sure I have that just right. I've also had to make sure my material is dry. Uh, it's summertime here in Maine. It's been very humid. Uh, we've had a lot of sun, we've had a lot of rain. So uh, my filament has spent a lot of time in the filament dryer before being loaded up in here. So um, no issues printing. I, anytime you see these printers that have like these, you know, cables and stuff like that, sometimes people wonder how long these last. Uh, honestly, no issue so far. The printer has really hasn't given me any headaches. I've had more issues just getting all the software to work with it uh, than anything else. So, so far the printer has uh, worked really well. It already has built into it here in the uh, back and in the front. You may have seen it in the uh, clips I showed. Uh, already has belt tensioners, so you don't have to worry about downloading any mods. It's, it's pretty much has everything you need uh, to get going. Okay, I'm gonna break this down into what I like and what I don't like. Uh, actually, I have the notes right here, so hang in there. And for those of you that use the time code to skip ahead, you're smart. Uh, okay, so what I like, first of all, it's a big printer for a low price. As I mentioned in the opener, 320 by 320 by 400 for just over 200 bucks. I haven't seen too many printers that are that inexpensive and can print that big, so that's interesting. Uh, it's a, got a great manual. I know usually people don't go, wow, we the manual is fantastic. But no, I mean, if you're going to be starting off brand new, if this is going to be your first printer or second or third, I mean, it's a small screen. There's a lot of things you can press on there. And if you're just wondering, where, where, you know, what do I do? What does this mean? How do I get there? The manual does a good job of explaining everything. So kudos to them there. The print surface, the other side is smooth. Uh, I don't think it's uh, designed to be printed on. You probably could try, but the textured bed is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's, it works fine. I had no issues with print sticking. I also, I did have a few occasions where uh, my Z offset, I baby stepped a little too low. So sometimes 
when you print too low or really mashes that material into the uh, texture, I had no issues removing it. Just using a little bit of, uh, you know, rubbing alcohol and some steel wool, you know, got everything out. So that was fine. Uh, the other thing that was interesting on this is, and I noticed it with the other uh, Mingda they sent over recently, is that the bed wire on the back, sometimes those can look a little dinky or weak, but this thing has a pretty robust looking uh, bed wire, uh, and it's, it's got quite the little arch to it too. Now the con of that is that when the printer homes uh, to the very front, uh, if you're putting this inside like a CR10 size enclosure, like the ones I have from Printed Solid, um, what you'll notice is that that cable is rather stiff. So what will happen is it will catch the back of the enclosure and it will stop the bed from moving and it'll make some noise. But it's, it's a pretty robust cable. So I, I feel good about that cable being able to handle lots of movement uh, without causing any issues. It's also uh, got two bolt points, as I mentioned in the uh, assembly video, uh, where everything stays in place nicely. Uh, the optical sensors on the uh, sides, uh, as far as keeping the gantry square, that's a nice perk to have because sometimes these things can get out of square and affect your print quality. Uh, every time at homes, it automatically takes care of that for you, so no issue there. And when you do the bed leveling uh, through the uh, button press up there, or if you do it through G29, uh, it will do a 5x5 five five grid. And with a 320 by 320 bed, that's, that's an excellent option right there. So those are the, some of the things I really like about this printer. Okay, now here are the things I dislike. I'm not gonna say I hate, I just say I dislike. So the SD card missing the necessary files, I mean, that's a real, that's an obvious one. And you, if you're getting a brand new printer, you're expecting everything to be there. So that's, that's an oversight on their part and hopefully their customer service will fix that. Now, the website having the wrong thing as well too is kind of a boneheaded move as well too. So that's, that's kind of silly. Now, this is something that's also not just Mingda, but Creality and other vendors out there that make their own versions of Kira. Um, it would be really, really nice for the community if you guys just worked directly with Kira and just provided the developers with the printer definitions or whatever settings it takes so that whenever we download the latest version of Kira, everything is there. We don't have to go hunt around and you know look at your fork or your version, whatever, because I don't suspect these manufacturers have many people involved in maintaining it. Um, the good and the bad part of all of these slicers, whether they're Prusa or Cura or others, is that they're always updating. So why would you want to run something that was put together a year ago versus having the latest and greatest? So I, again, I don't, I don't know the solution to that, but I do work closely with the Cura developers. Uh, I'm active on their GitHub. I, I like Kira. I have no issues with it, but I know it's a big frustration for them when people complain to them about, hey, why isn't my printer part of the list? Because your manufacturer hasn't worked with the developer. So my wish is that they would work with the developers so that we no longer have to deal with these specialized versions of Kira. Just use the latest and greatest. This way we're getting not only all the newest features, but our printer's there. Call me kooky. Okay, this is a nitpick. I totally get it. But I would like it if you're gonna baby step that first layer. Right now, the default value is 0.1 millimeter. So if you wanna go, if you wanna bring that nozzle just a little bit closer, if you hit that down button, it's gonna go 0.1. If you're already really close, it's, it, it might rub the bed. I like a value of 0.01, and then, you know, then work your way to, you know, 0.1 or, you know, one millimeter or whatever. I start at the lowest value. Again, this is a nitpick. This is just the way I operate, but that to me, I think would be a good safety measure uh, to prevent people from rubbing their nozzle into the bed. Just an idea. Uh, the other th two things involve the uh, print head, the shroud. If you're trying to baby step that first layer, you, you can't see around that shroud. You're watching that first layer come down and <laughs> that giant print head shroud is in the way. It would be nice if that wasn't there. You know, leave a clear view of the nozzle, that'd be even better. The other thing is there's a light in there and I don't know if it's supposed to be lighting up the bed. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing, but here, here's a pro tip. It's, it's not lighting up anything. <laughs> if you're hoping to light up that first layer to make that first layer easier to hone in, well, first we can't see past the shroud and first we can't see the light. So that would be my suggestion to them is, you know, fix that. That's, that's a little bit silly. The other one, this is a more complicated one. I do almost all of my printing through Octoprint. 
And this thing in the front has all kinds of interfaces where you can plug into it. And I think the intention is with the USB-C and the USB and the SD. Obviously the SD is SD card. And I think um, the other is for, you know, USB drives. Now with Octoprint, you know, you're plugging into that USB port. And I had no luck with the USB-A size. When I tried USB-C, I was able to connect to it. And again, I'm using a USB-C data cord. It's rated for like 40 some odd megs per second or gigs per second, whatever. So I've used it to copy data from devices to my computer. So I know it's a data cord because I paid like 30 bucks for it. So that's not a charging cord. Um, if you use a charging cord, your mileage may vary because you just don't know how they're pinned out. But anyway, what's happening on this machine is that sometimes it'll work for a complete print and sometimes it'll lose communication midway through or at the beginning. It's just really random what happens. And I think it's either one of two things. One of the things that led me down the rabbit hole was it could be electrical interference, maybe, or something the way that that port is set up. So on this machine and my other Mingda as well too, I cannot reliably use Octoprint on it. So if you're hoping to use Octoprint to remote control this and monitor the print with you know, Octoprint and Oboco or whatever other plugins you want to use, it's not going to be very reliable. Um, poor Wonder Woman. Um, I mean, arguably you could say we got the best parts, but <laughs> uh, yeah, this is where it just kind of stopped printing and the print head uh, just stayed there and there was an error message on the printer. So yeah, so that, that's kind of unfortunate. I don't know what the fix is for that because I'm not an electrical person. Um, maybe it's an electrical noise, but I really don't know how to counter that. But I can say this with certainty is that it's not reliable to Octoprint. So that would be one of my things I wish they would fix. Okay, so that's the pro and con list, so to speak. And like I said, outside of having some <laughs> issues getting it up and running with the slicer, the machine mechanically has been fine. It's been great. I think it's a good value for the size that it is. And hopefully the uh, feedback I've offered today, hopefully Ming Deer will improve it so that we don't have to fight with it to get the slicer to work. Now on the website, as I mentioned earlier, let me go to the second monitor here. Uh, yeah, right here, $209 on sale. I don't know how long the sale will last based on our film date here at the tail end of August. Um, the other thing I wanted to, I know someone's gonna ask me about did I print PETG or other materials? I just like the PLA and PLA plus. The hot end says it can do a max nozzle temperature of 260, but I don't have a lot of information on that. If it's an all metal hot end, I see a Teflon tube. So uh, that kind of tells me that I don't wanna, you know, you definitely don't wanna cook Teflon because that will off gas uh, nasty stuff. So uh, definitely contact their support if you're thinking about doing that uh, to make sure you do not do any harm to yourself. Okay, that's it for this time. If you want to see what I'm up to, check out my social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on X, and of course you're on YouTube. So check those out and take a look at what I'm doing. I thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best. Please, please, please print safe.